So welcome back uh, to my No Name channel and another uh, Bali COVID-19 update from Singaraja and uh, my name is Bruce and it's a beautiful day up north. Okay, so it's uh, Sunday, May 24th, Eagle Feet Tree in Bali. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So welcome back. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to subscribe somewhere here, there. Um, so <clears throat> what's happening with the, the virus first? Uh, numbers for today, 388 um, confirmed cases, 287 recovered, 4 deaths and that leaves 97 active cases. And yesterday we had an additional eight cases, uh, eight new cases. Six were in the Badung district, one was in Denpasar, and one was in Bangli, and, and in Bulele, Ray. Um, okay, so um, there were, uh, I think, four tested positive. Uh, in Mengui, uh, the village of Mengui in uh, Badung district. And uh, the government's concerned uh, that this is a possible cluster, and so they're going to be doing some more testing tomorrow. Uh, test everybody just to make sure, see what they've got. Um, they're really trying to keep uh, on top of this, and so far, so good. Um, it's really quiet today, uh, really, really quiet today. And so, um, what's in the news about the virus in Bali? Okay, so first up, um, oh, if visitors, people that come to visit Bali, uh, or people that live here and are coming back, well, will be required to have a test, COVID-19 test, um, that has valid for the past seven days, it would be good for seven days after arriving in Bali. Uh, people that come in on the plane through Nura Rai um, will be required to show documentation that they've had the, uh, the PCR test um, and they have a declaration that they don't have the virus there, they're free, um, the virus free. And in order to buy a ticket, they need to have this declaration uh, and they go online. There is a, uh, a website, a government website where they can go online to get a QR code and uh, the website is in the first article down below. Uh, and so then they get that and they can submit that when they, they buy their ticket. Not supposed to be able to buy a ticket without uh, already having been tested. Then, when they get to the airport, they need to present this documentation, and the the airlines are responsible for making sure that they have this. Uh, otherwise, they should not let them uh, into the departure lounge. And then, when they get here, um, then everything is checked by the airport authorities and the the Bali COVID-19 task force uh, to make sure that everything is hunky-dory. Now, this doesn't apply for people coming in by sea. So, local folks um, coming in, crossing at one of the harbors, uh, Gili Manok or Adang Bai, um, they just have a, a rapid test. They just have to have a rapid test, to have the evidence that they've taken the rapid test and that they're uh, free of the virus. Now, there's no visas being given out. Uh, so if you're a foreigner, uh, unless you have a, a, a work in a, a medical industry, uh, some, some uh, essential service, uh, or you have a kitas or a kitab, uh, you will not be given a 
coronavirus. Bali is not open for tourism yet. Um, and so far, there's been no definitive, I talked about this in the last, uh, last video, there's been no definitive uh, statement of when this is gonna happen. They're taking their time, and I think that's great. Um, so, uh, gotta be tested. And that's the good thing. Okay, so, uh, next. <laughs> okay, so everybody, you know, there are these rules around the world uh, that everybody has, and everybody keeps breaking them. Um, and the, the whole issue of airlines and airline traffic and passengers and what's going to happen, that's uh, been in the news everywhere. Uh, I think Aruta just laid off 800 people without pay. Uh, now, according to uh, the protocols in, in Indonesia, planes are not supposed to be more than 50% full. Um, that's to keep social distancing as much as possible on the planes. So, two airlines um, this week, past week, were hit with sanctions because they were way past their numbers. Um, that's Lion Air and Batik Air. Um, they went over the 50% mark and they've been hit with sanctions two days. Uh, their, all their um, flights have been canceled. Not, not a big sanction, but just a warning. Um, make sure you follow the rules. So, that's, uh, that's positive as well. And there's, of course, a link down to the story. And unfortunately, another doctor has tested positive. Uh, a doctor from Denpasar works in a private hospital and tested positive this past week uh, for the virus. And uh, it's. it's Unfortunately, when anybody um, has positive, uh, especially those people who are responsible for taking care of us, um, and as the father of a uh, daughter who works in the medical profession, uh, who's a nurse, uh, I'm of course concerned about medical personnel. Um, and so, here's another guy. Not an old guy. Um, for those in Bali, is, okay, Bali is. We've got the nuts here too. The American nuts, the British nuts, the Australian nuts, the French nuts, and foreign nuts, um, who are arguing on the social media pages. Oh, the the coronavirus is no such thing. It's a hoax. Uh, this is all Bill Gates uh, and big pharma. You wacko people, wacko people, go go to the U.S. Um, there are a lot of a lot of wackos there. Um, what was the state? Is it? Uh, it's Oregon. Um, they just uh, a Republican wacko who believes in the the, the Q group um, was just won the nomination to run for senator. Um, there are a lot of crazy people around. Uh, so, um, another one of my little rants. Okay, so, unfortunate that the, the doctor was um, tested positive. And, and so local transmission um, is happening here. Um, out of the eight, eight cases, um, that I mentioned at the start of the video. Seven of those are local transmissions, so local transmissions happening here. And the um, government officials um, responsible for dealing with the virus have issued warnings again, um, please, to the local population to take this seriously. This is, uh, this is important. Restrict your activity, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Go out, make sure you wear a mask, reduce contact with people while you are out, wash your hands. Um, this is serious, as they say, and it's 
the responsibility of everybody here to take care of everybody else. And if you're one of those people that refuses to wear a mask, you're one of the guilty folks. I don't care if you believe in the virus or not. You can believe in all the crazy theories you want to. Um, but that's the rule. Uh, and you're here. Respect the Balinese. Respect the Indonesians. Respect the uh, foreigners here that are, are following along with the law. Uh, and put a damn mask on. Next up, non-COVID related. Um, just a human interest story. Uh, Kind of a strange one. So and then up in my area here, right up there, not, not too far from here, uh, 15 kilometers, about 15 kilometers, uh, the village of Yik, uh, which is uh, known in this area for the waterfalls. A lot of people, a lot of tourists go to the waterfalls up in Yik. Um, I've gone. Uh, they're nice. Um, so um, a French uh, national, was driving home. He had uh, taken his uh, car to uh, a shop to get it uh, repaired, and he was driving home, <laughs> and it started on fire. Uh, now this is uh, this is uh, I'm just I'm just going by what the uh, the local paper said. So his car started on fire, uh, and he got out. And uh, here's here's a picture of what the car looks like. Um, so it, it burned, burned up, um, up by Gitgit, and he was on his way home to, um, I guess he lives up in uh, Panchasari, um, and he was on his way home when the car started burning, and so su supposedly it's uh, due to um, a short in the electrical system. Uh, that's what started the fire. The, the kind of the humorous thing, not humorous for him, because losses are estimated at 80 million rupees, which, you know, it's not peanuts. It's um, close to 6,000 US dollars. Um, and he's fortunate that he wasn't hurt or anybody else was hurt. Um, so he takes the car into the shop, gets it fixed, and then whew, up in smoke. Uh, so. Uh, you never know these days. Um, so, okay, uh, that's the local one. And, um, oh, and so my, my, my little pumpkin's still not here. She's still with her parents in Denpasar because schools are still closed. And I send messages to my daughter, uh, my daughter, Joey's mom. Uh, when, is, when is school over? When is it going to open up? When is Joey going to come back home? I don't know. Teacher doesn't know. Well, there's not that much time left in the school year uh, if they're going by the, uh, the usual schedule. Uh, school is usually over mid June and the kids have a month vacation. So, um, online schooling continues here. Uh, Schools are opening up, and I'll talk about this in uh, my, uh, my the weekly news around Bali and Asia. Um, if you take a look here, it's over at the Peripatetic Anthropologist uh, channel. Uh, schools are opening up. Uh, they opened up in Korea. They've opened up in Vietnam and China and Japan. Um, so they're opening up around the world now. Uh, ones that aren't open are considering just when and how to do it. And so they're still not open up the valley here. Uh, they're playing safe, and as much as I miss having Zoe here, uh, that's a good thing, play it safe. And so, like I said earlier, um, Ramadan is over. This is Eid al-Fitri, or Labaran, uh, and it's gone well. Um, Usually what happens in, in Labar, here in Singaraja, is that um, people go and, and uh, pray early in the morning, um, either in a mosque or at the field, um, at the city park, uh, right up by where Old Hardy's was. I'm not sure what's there, there now, um, but up in that area, um, up in Jalan Nuarai. And 
that those have been banned, um, both nationally and locally, uh, these large gatherings. And as far as I know, uh, everybody has going along with that. Uh, I know here the, uh, the mosque was dark this morning um, and my wife was home, my son was home. Um, so it's been a different Eid al-Fitri. Eid al-Fitri is a time when you do your morning prayer and then you spend the day visiting with family and neighbors. Um, and I see some people out wandering around doing some visiting, but but not like um, in years past when everybody, you spend the whole day just seeing groups of people walking up and down the, the street in the compound here. And so uh, that's it uh, for Eid al-Fitri, um, Eid Mubarak, um, Happy Labaran, and uh, now we get back to normal, if you're a Muslim, back to time to eat again, if you want to. And so, uh, that's about it. Oh, I was going to show you my new little toy, but um, uh, I left it downstairs, it's been charging. Um, there's a couple of uh, a couple of videos. So I have this new little toy, the DJI Osmo Pocket. It is so cool, and I will show you uh, next time. It's, it's such a cool little camera and it's got so many amazing uh, possibilities for its use and I, I might use it um, for a vlog and so uh, that's it um, here's a uh, here's a video with the DJI Osmo pocket that I took uh, this morning a time lapse uh, it's really cool. Um, it was a short time lapse. Um, I'm just getting used to this. So, uh, enjoy. Stay safe.